Hello mga kawamat, sa video lesson na to, we will discuss about the Midline Theorem. So, the Midline Theorem, it is a the segment whose endpoints are the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and half as long. So, ibig sabihin class, so ito, yung sukat nito ay twice ng sukat ni BC. Okay, again, kapag kinuha daw natin yung sukat ni BC, that is twice ng sukat ni DE. And DE is parallel to BC. So, uh, consider this figure or the triangle BAC. So, in triangle BAC, so ito yung triangle BAC natin, yung point D natin is the midpoint of BE. BA rather. So, again, yung point D natin ay midpoint ni BA. And then, yung point E natin ay midpoint naman ni AC. So, ibig sabihin, pa, uh, BD is congruent to DA. Ibig sabihin nun, ang sukat ni BD, kung ano yung sukat ni BD, ay sukat din ni DA. Or, kung ito ay 10, 10 din yung sukat nito. And also, AE is congruent to EC. So, same din sila ng sukat. So, using the vertical angle theorem, so, triangle AED, so, itong triangle AED na to, using the vertical theorem, is congruent to triangle FEC. So, FEC, no? Again, triangle AED is congruent to triangle FEC. So, kasi nga, ito, di ba, sabi dito, pag vertical angles, they are congruent. So, sabi dito, vertical, by using the vertical angle theorem, itong triangle nito sa kayong triangle nito are congruent. Next, using the SAS postulate or the side angle side postulate, yung triangle AED natin ay congruent kay triangle AEF. Again, yung triangle AED natin is congruent kay triangle A E, F. Okay, that is side. Okay, angle side postulate. Where your DA, so ito yung line seg, yung segment na to, yung DA natin ay congruent kay FC. So ito. And then, that is using the CPCTC. Or the corresponding parts of congruent triangle is congruent. Next is BD. Okay, itong part na to is congruent to FC. Okay, using the transitivity. And also, the triangle ADE, so itong, I know, angle rather, angle ADE, so itong angle na to, congruent siya kay angle FCE. So itong angle na to ay congruent sa angle na to. Okay. This also corresponding parts of congruent triangle is congruent. So, since a pair of alternate angles are formed, so meron tayong alternate angles, which are congruent, then BD, saan yung BD natin? So, yung BD natin ay parallel to FC. Ito. And then, it form parallelogram BDFC. So, kung ito lang yung triangle natin class, ito yung given triangle natin, yung BAC, and then in-extend natin yung line na to, and then nagkaroon tayo dito ng point F, so magkakaform tayo ng parallelogram. Okay? So, since nakapag-form tayo, that BD ay parallel to FC. So, in parallelogram BDFC, so, again, ha, ito yung para, uh, parallelogram BDFC natin, ito. There are two pair of opposite sides that are congruent. Kasi nga, yung DF natin is parallel to BC. So, ibig sabihin, yung DF natin ay congruent to BC. And yung DE natin, also, likewise, DA also is parallel to BC. So, itong DB natin ay congruent din kay FC. So, E is the midpoint of DF, okay? So, therefore, yung sukat ni DE ay equal sa sukat ni EF. They are congruent. 
And DF, asan yun si DF? DF congruent to BC. So, pagkukunin natin, pag in natin to, yung sukat ni DE plus EF that is equal to the measure of DF. And then, uh, pagkukunin natin si BC, again, pagkukunin natin si BC that is twice ng sukat ni DE. Or yung measure ng DE. And then, kapag kukunin naman din natin si DE, that is one half ng measure ng BC natin. Okay, for example, in triangle, B, E, A, X and Y are midpoints of B, E and E, A. So, yung X, midpoint siya ni B, E. And then, yung point Y, midpoint siya ni E, A. Okay, so complete the following statement. So, B, X, si B, X ay congruent sa anong kanino siya congruent. Okay, sabi kanina, pinaliwanag that... BX is, itong line na to ay congruent dito since X is the midpoint of BE. So, therefore, BX is congruent to EX. Okay, another. BA is congruent to, so, pagkukunin natin yung sukat ni BA, that is twice ng sukat, ng measure ni XY. So, therefore, BE is congruent to twice ng measure ng XY. Okay. EA, so ito, ito ng buong to, is congruent to EY plus YA. Okay? Next, kung ang BA natin is 36, ano yung value ng XY? So, kahit hindi mo ito i-compute, no? pwedeng i-compute natin mentally. So, alam natin ang XY ay kalahati ni BA at si BA naman ay doble ni XY. So, kung Uh, si BA daw ay 36, so ilan yung XY? That is, kung, kung compute natin, base twice na XY, so that is 18. So kahit hindi mo na uh, ipakita yung solution kung alam mo yung property, so kaya kaya isolve mentally. Next. Kung yung EX natin ay 10, ano yung B, uh, sukat ng BX? 10 din. Okay? Kasi they are congruent. Next. Okay, meron tayong triangle LMN. So, triangle LMN. So, para makuha natin yung value, yung measure ni LN ito, kailangan natin isolve muna yung value ng X. So, we all know that LN is twice ng measure ni EF. So, by substituting the given value, so LN is equal to X plus 10, and then 2 times EF. So, EF is X plus 3.5. Then, distribute natin si 2. That is 2 times X. That is 2X. 2 times 3.5. That is 7. And then, simplify. So, 10 minus 7. So, si 7 nilipat natin dito sa left side. And si X nilipat natin sa right side. Para hindi na tayo magkaroon ng negative na value ng X. So, kaya convenient na si X ang ilipat natin sa right side. Kasi, uh, nasanay tayo, di ba, na laging ni, ang X natin laging nasa left side. Pwede rin naman na dito siya sa right side. Okay, so, 10 minus 7, that is 3. So, ibig sabihin, yung value ng X natin is 3. Makukuha na natin ngayon yung sukat, yung measure ni LN. And that is, substitute lang natin, LN is equal to X plus 10. Palitan lang natin ang X ng 3. And that is 3 plus 10. The answer is 13. Okay, another example. So, same procedure, no? Same procedure that your kailangan kunin muna yung X. Dito naman, SR yung hinahanap. Okay? So, FD is equal to twice ng SR. So, X plus 2 is equal to 2 times 2X minus 14. Okay, then distribute 2 times 2x, that is 4x, 2 times negative 14, that is negative 28. And then simplify. So, lipat si x sa left side, as sa right side pala. And then si negative 28, lipat natin dito. So, maging positive 28. 4x minus x, that is 3x, 2 plus 28, that is 30. So, divide both equation by 3. So, x is equal to 10. So, makukuha na natin si SR. 
So, SR is equal to 2X minus 14. Substitute natin si X. So, 2 times 10 minus 14. 2 times 10 is 20 minus 14. The answer is 6. So, kung titignan natin plus, if this is 6, so dapat ito ay 12. So, anong X natin? 10, di ba? Plus to 12. So, ganun dito. Machi-check din natin. So, kung ito ay uh, 13, so dapat ito ay 7.5. Ano? Tam, uh, se, again, kung ito ay 13, so dapat ito ay 6.5 pala. So, kung ang X natin is 3, 3 plus 3.5, that is 6.5. So, tama pa rin. Okay? So, tatandaan lagi na ang sukat ng pangatlong uh, side natin dito ay kala, uh, doble siya ng measure nito. Tapos, kung ito naman ang binigay sa inyong given, pag pinapahanap ito, kalahati yan ng sukat nito. Okay, another example. We have triangle ACE. Okay, with point B as the midpoint of CA and point D is the midpoint of CE. Okay, if CD, okay, if CD is 19, uh, then one half of CE is equal to 19 then Bakit? Kasi si CD, di ba, 19. So, ibig sabihin yung DE natin is 19 din. So, 19 plus 19, 38. So, kalahati ni 38, 19 yon Okay. If BD is 21, what is the measure of? Uh, then, BD plus AE is equal to. So, meron na tayong uh, value sa BD. Ito na lang, si AE ang kailangan natin. So, yan ang kailangan kunin. So, since A is twice ng BD, so that is 2 times 21 is 42. So, ibig sabihin yung value ng AE natin is 42. Since ang pinapakuha sa atin is yung sum ni BD and AE, so therefore, 21 plus 42, the answer is 63. Okay? Next is, if BD is 2x minus 1 and a E is x plus 4, what is BD? So, since uh, AE is equal to twice ng BD, so substitute lang natin ito, so that is x plus 4 is equal to 2 times the quantity of 2x minus 1. And then distribute, so 2 times 2x, that is 4x, 2 times negative 1, that is negative 2. So, that is and then simplify. So, lipat natin si x dito sa right side. no? So, x. So, maging 4x minus x. And then si negative 2, lipat natin dito kaya maging 4 plus 2. So, therefore, 4x minus x, that is 3x. 4 plus 2, that is 6. So, divide both the equation by 3. So, x is equal to 2. So, makukuha na natin ngayon si BD. So, substitute lang natin. So, BD is equal to 2x minus 1. Substitute 2 sa x natin. So, 2 times 2, that is 4, minus 1. The answer is 3. Okay. Another example. Okay. So, same figure pala. So, same given class. So, kung ang BC naman natin ay 2A minus 1, tapos yung BA natin is 4A minus 17. So, ano yung measure ng BA natin? So, since uh, point B is the midpoint of AC, so, ibig sabihin yung AB natin ay equal kay BC. So, BC is equal to BA. So, 2A minus 1 is equal to 4A minus 17. So, in order na in order to solve BA, yung makuha natin yung measure ni BA, kailangan muna natin kunin yung variable A natin. So, Kagaya ng ginagawa natin, so this time, si 4a yung ilipat natin dito. So, 2a minus 4a, that is negative 2a. Negative 17 plus 1, that is negative 16. And divide both the equation by negative 2, so a is equal to positive 8. So, makukuha na natin ngayon si ba, and that is, uh, substitute natin si 8. So, 4 times 8, that is 32. So, minus 17, the answer is 15. So, ibig sabihin, ang sukat ni B is 15. I-check natin kung ang 
BC natin ay 15 din. Okay? So, ano yung value ng BC natin? 2A minus 1. So, 2 times 8, 16 minus 1, 15. Okay? So, tama yung nakuha natin. Okay? Another example. Kung ang BA natin is 17, what is the uh, value of DE? Okay? So, and then CA plus CE is equal to. So, paano natin kunin yun? Yan na, ito ang binigay, yung dalawang ito. So, first, kunin natin yung buong ito. Okay? Kasi equal naman sila. So, therefore, yung CA natin ay twice ni BA. And that is 2 times 17. The answer is 34. Si CE naman ay twice ni DE. So, therefore, 2 times 14, that is 28. So, since ang kinukuha natin, CA plus CE, so the sum of CA plus CE is equal to 34 plus 28, that is 62. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button para updated kayo for more video tutorial. This is your guide in learning your math lesson, your WOW Math channel.